Hey there, what's poppin'? I th yeah, did you hear that? That's my 20-year-old cat, Maya, in the background. She showed up at our door 20 years ago. She was a kitten. <clears throat> Somebody dropped her off. I lived in a suburban neighborhood that was known for a haven for animal drop-offs. All of us had big hearts. Anyway, long story. Today is actually my talking about something totally different from that. I believe it's in a religious text where it talks about having your uh, a light on a hill cannot be hid. I think that's in the Bible. But the metaphor of having my light on a hill or not and putting a, a barrel or a cover on it where the light may leak out in spots, but certainly the, the world is not benefiting from all of the light as it were. Don't mean to get too abstract here. But the thought occurred to me today while I'm doing my day job stuff at Pluralsight. Why am I hide why have I been hiding my light under a barrel for a long time? I have a long record of achievements and I'm no longer going to hide them and it's okay to own the darn things. Today's the first of these videos and it's about when I was part of the Cisco Press CCNA network simulator which is a piece of software that turned into a series. I, I linked in the YouTube notes there, I linked to the most recent page at the Cisco Press website. I mean, this is, I haven't been part of Pearson and Cisco Press since like 2011, maybe 2010, around the birth of, of my daughter Zoe. So it was a very tumultuous time in my life then, like it is now. And... Basically, like I said, I just, the theme here isn't necessarily telling you about the software project, although I'm happy to. It's more about my realization that it's, it's not bragging, it's not arrogant, it's not being a blowhard. All of the judgments and labels that I put on myself, oh, well, you can't brag because then you'll be a, I mean, whatever, I guess. But my thought is now I've got a, a record of achievements that can be inspirational and beneficial to many others. And this came out, I'm not going to give details, of course, but it came out in my day job in literally a conversation with another colleague where it was like, oh, I had no idea that you had this entire past life as a Cisco expert. And the truth of the matter was before I got into cloud computing, I was into Cisco hammer and tongs. I had earned every certification right up to the C. I didn't earn the CCIE. That was next, of course. But I had the CCNP, the CCDP, the CCNA, the CCD. At that time, this is in the early 2000s, all the way up into maybe 2012, there were a lot of certs. I, I'm out of it. I haven't been in, in Cisco at all ever since. I went into uh, cloud computing and now generative AI and DevOps. But upon reflection, I am more than happy to get back into Cisco because I can only imagine the stuff they're doing now with software-defined networks and cloud computing and hybrid cloud being a default rather than a non-existence. <laughs> so in owning this particular achievement, I feel proud of it because it's a, it's a high-dollar project that helped a lot of people. And if you want to know specifics, of course, I'm not going to talk about private NDA internal stuff. But just to give you the high level picture, my role at Pearson was a, I'm a generalist. I'm a Jack or Jill. I'm not a Jill of all trades. I'm a he, him dude, but I'm a Jack of all trades who loves just about all tech. And my hugest benefit, I think, to Pearson and Cisco Press was that because I lived in both worlds, publishing business and also practitioner and also tech training. I was able to communicate with people like Wendell Odom and Sean Wilkins. Both of those guys are, are the subject matter experts behind that line of software. And again, if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, we're talking about geeky networking stuff. And the Cisco uh, product is like tops in the industry. And their certifications are very valuable for IT folks who have a passion for networking. I can't imagine being a Cisco specialist, if you don't love Ethernet and you love packet analysis and you love TCP IP, I do. So I could actually see myself re-specializing in Cisco networking. But anyway, I, I was a go-between. And so I had a lot of 
teaching to do makes sense. I'm a practitioner and a teacher. I helped us get all into Jira where we could be centralized with our flow, with our SDLC. I don't think DevOps didn't exist as a formal concept then at all. So silos were the rule. Hence, my being able to explain to the Cisco press people the specifics of what we need in Jira, and we're going to contract, we're going to do a request for proposal to actually design. It turned out to be a Java application, a Java desktop app, because in those days it was computer books were books, and they would ship with CD or DVD media. So our goal was to get the software as a bundle with the cert prep books and sell it standalone. So again, my role was a little of everything, QA engineer, because I would need to test Sean's and Wendell's work when they would submit work. It was basically a library. I haven't, again, I haven't looked at the software in a decade or more, but it's a library of tasks that you need to know on this cert. And back in those days, we did simulation rather than emulation. And also there was no cloud. So we had to fake it. And basically a lot of the heavy lifting <clears throat> was taking the um, Sean's and Wendell's designs and making sure we could fake that in Java. And there I was testing all in between and translating, etc. It was fun. It was tedious. It's not really my, my deepest professional passion. It didn't scratch that. Well, it, it's, it's complicated. It kind of goes into other stories that are not so necessary. But I remember that it caught on really quickly because there is Boson. I know a lot of those people at boson.com. In fact, they're right here in Nashville. And there's a whole fascinating history with Boson Software and Transcender, the old test prep. And I, I worked for them, so I know all those folks as well. Um, but really, in terms of if you're prepping for Cisco, what are your choices if you don't already work at a shop where you have gear to work on? You're going to need to go to ITT Tech, which I mentioned in another YouTube video I've taught for ITT. Very fun stories there. And they had some substantial rack equipment so that the students were actually getting console access to Cisco gear, which was very cool, actually. But it's still, even in 2024 and with cloud computing, Cisco is a tough nut to crack. And I know, you know, if you know what I'm talking about, I've worked on Cloud Labs development teams a lot over the last few years. Cisco, because they're so proprietary, greedy, <coughs> no, proprietary, they really want you to go through them for everything. You know, they have every right to do that, of course, but so we on the outside have to think outside the proverbial box. Gee, Tim, are you going to come up with another cliche to layer in there? <laughs> Let me come back to round out this video with sharing that fundamental insight that how in the world, I have all of this, this vast experience and this, this huge timeline of achievements. Why am I not sharing it and talking about it more to share with others, get their feedback, to maybe generate new ideas, not just for me and for you, but for all of us, you know? So that's where I'm going with this. I'll do it one at a time. And, and I'll tell you something else I had a brainstorm about this morning. And I'm asking good old chat GPT for advice. And she has got me thinking along the lines of a bootstrapped React thing. I, I want to have a creative timeline, a single web page that's responsive to any viewport, you know, anything like that, any screen. And it's a timeline of, of my creative output and it'll be vertically scrolling, and some years are going to be more condensed than others, but it's going to be interactive, such that you can hover to get a hover pop, click to investigate, a modal, it'll be a book. Another reason I'm getting this idea is that in getting going through some of my old possessions post-divorce, I found a Microsoft Press book. Uh, hang on, I'm going to get it. <laughs> Yeah, I found this, and I, was, I haven't thought of this project, short as it was, for a long time. And uh, I was like, do I even have this book on my website, you know? And then that thought, I thought, my gosh, how much more of this is just hidden under a barrel? I need to get this crap out there 
so that we can all enjoy. And frankly, I'm proud of it <laughs> because I worked my ass off for all these achievements, every single one of them. And that's why I have 0.00, .00 embarrassment or shame about my material success or possessions. I've worked for every atom in it. So I'm just a happy camper, and I hope you are as well. I'll see you next time.